Inflation is through the roof, with new data from April showing prices jump more than 8%. That's a near 40-year high. Gas prices, well, they also shattered another record again today. Highest prices ever when you go to the gas pump. Just as a new report finds two-thirds of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And parents, they can't even find baby formula. The President Biden, he's taking zero responsibility for record high inflation, instead blaming the pandemic and Russian President Putin, while claiming that he is actually helping Americans. Do you take any responsibility for inflation in this country? Do you take any responsibility for your policies? I think our policies help, not hurt. And not only that, he's not taking any of the blame. Biden also tore into what he calls the ultra MAGA agenda. Oh, it sounds so ominous, doesn't it? While pushing a talking point, the Washington Post has called a lie. Emily, Democrats really need to wrap their head around this ahead of the midterms. Mm. Fascinating piece from Politico out today. Katie Porter, she's a vulnerable Democrat, one of the more moderate ones. Mm -hmm. Here's what she said. She talks about going to the grocery store. I had a similar experience. She got bacon. I think it was bacon. She said it was uh, 9 dollars a pound, and she ended up putting it back and had this experience. Like, this is what Americans are going through. And here's what Politico said. When Porter gave an emotional speech about how inflation has hit her family during a private House Democratic caucus meeting, meeting last week. She said it seemed like the first time the personal toll of high consumer prices had sunk in for the lawmakers in the room. Mm -hmm. Here's what she said. Too often, Congress recognizes issues too late. Porter, a top GOP target this fall in a swing district, said in an interview, I had a colleague mention to me, we're not seeing it in the polls. Well, you don't know what to ask, she said. We see it in every poll, Emily. We put it up. We see it in the grocery stores, Kaylee. We are the ones that are living it. I mean, there's a reason that every time we go to the grocery store, we are missing or cannot afford up to or over a third of what we need on that grocery list. So you're telling me that the Democrats need a poll to tell them that? That they don't do their own shopping, that they don't need baby formula? It kills me that the reason that we are suffering is because of the decisions that this president and this administration has made or the lack thereof, their policies, and yet all we hear from them are the same recycled lies over and over again. We heard it yesterday from the president, right? Remember it was over a year ago, April last year, that he said inflation was transitory, and then he blamed corporate greed, and then he blamed Putin, and now he's blaming MAGA Americans. It's everybody but him, to your point, and I think that disconnect is the reason why it hits so close to home for Americans, that when they're suffering at the grocery store and in their pocketbook, when two-thirds are living on credit and paycheck to paycheck, all they want to hear from their president is the truth. Some transparency, some ownership of the policy, some semblance of I see you and I hear you, but instead we're just getting that same recycled lies over and over and over again. And the reality that because they disrespect us, we do not deserve the respect of honesty or ownership of those policies. Yeah, Harris blame. We heard it yesterday on the couch. You dubbed it, I think, the three or the four P's. It was Putin. It was the private sector. Uh, it was the pandemic here today. Biden's remarks are dubbed in part the Putin price hike. Mm -hmm. um, also, his statement out today, he blames the pandemic and Putin for unacceptably high inflation. This was the president. He told us in the campaign, um, I'll do my job and take responsibility. I won't blame others. He's blamed like 15 entities in the last 24 hours. They're, they're way underwater. I mean, when you're drowning, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to, like, unless somebody throws you a rope, you, you stop reaching. <laughs> it's like, there, there's, yeah, they don't know what to reach for at this point. You mentioned you want Americans to, to hear the words, I see you. We are in ICU, intensive care oh. for the economy. <laughs> exactly. um, and, you know, this, this whole thing of Democrats don't get this. Yeah, the ones with the capital D don't. But if you are a Democrat voter with a little d, you get it, because you're standing in line with everybody else. You're, you're, you're looking for baby formula today as well. You're, you know, that's the short-sightedness of this White House. They, and, and if they believe, and Lawrence, I know you'll get more into this, if they believe that they can divide us by skin color and hair texture and compartmentalize us as voters, they're going to get a rude awakening because the very people that they will then depend on economically and culturally and racially because they identify us, the very people they will need will be the people in the cities with the highest crime suffering the most, or even the suburbs. I mean, crime doesn't have a zip code now, right? Mm -hmm. um, it'll be the people who were on the WIC programs for those moms who need a little food stamp boost, right? Because they can't get the formula either. Mm -hmm.
I, I mean, they, they've hurt everybody with this. They've made us all Americans. They can call some ultra MAGA, which is very Marvel comics of them. <laughs> <laughs> but what they ought to be calling all of us are Americans who feel their policies, and not in a good way. Yeah. Not in a good way, unless you look at the hot take of the day, Lawrence, from CNN's Jim Shudo. Uh, he had the hot take for sure. New U.S. inflation took a breather last month. Took a breather. <laughs> so just don't believe your own eyes, essentially. You know, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and we, we cite polls so often. But what about our representatives actually speaking to their people? Yeah. I mean, one of the unique jobs that I have here is being able to do diners and talk with people from all different walks of life. And when I'm in West Virginia and the people, the moms are telling me about the formula and the gas prices and the crime, and then I go to the South Side of Chicago, they say the same thing. Yes. And then I go to Birmingham, Alabama, Dallas, and, and everyone is saying the same. I mean, it, it gets to the point where you just got to say that the Democratic Party is not listening to the, to the voters there. And Harris is right that they want to try to separate us. I'm here to tell you, the people that I talk to on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't believe that. They don't believe the Democrats. They feel like they are responsible for what's happening in the country today. I talked to one woman that said, and I know they want to criticize the MAGA agenda, but one woman made it very clear. I just wanted to go back to how it was. Uh -huh. um, th there is such a focus from the media to, to focus on personality and the things that really don't matter to the American people. But I guarantee you, tone doesn't matter when the gas prices is up, when parents can't get the formula, when crime is out of control, when the board is surging and fentanyl and, and kids are overdosing. All that tone stuff that they highlighted in the last election and did not highlight the issues that separate the candidates are coming to bite the Democrats in the you-know-what. Mm -hmm. And that is because they have yet to provide any solutions for any communities. So you look at the polling. Black voters are gone. You look at Hispanic, they're yeah. gone. When you look at Gen Xers and Gen Z, they're millennials, they're gone. Yeah, so the out. question is, who do the Democrats have? And, I, you know, I, I kept hearing the polling. Manchin is going to be a big player in West Virginia. Well, we just saw Mooney won. And the polling was suggesting that the other guy had some type of uh, tangibles because D Jim Justice was supporting the, the, the Democratic establishment, the Republican establishment was supporting. I talked to voters yesterday. They said Mooney was going to win. What did we see in, in the results when they came up? Mooney won because he had the MAGA agenda. And I know they want to taint that as people that want to want to take their country back and they, 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 they're, they're racist and all that type of stuff. That's not going to play with average day people. No. They've experienced what happened during the Trump administration with their pocketbooks, and they know what they're experiencing right now. And these are all people. Yes. All people, all right. Americans together. And yeah. Morgan, let's listen to some yeah. everyday Americans. You're a new mom. This is the plight that parents are dealing with. It's incredibly stressful to not know if I'm going to be able to feed my baby next week. A little concerning. You know, she's not yet on sol like actual solid human foods yet. It has been a nightmare. Every few days hunting for baby formula. As a parent, you just want to provide for your child, and it's your worst nightmare if you're unable to do so. A mother shouldn't have to worry about how is her child going to get fed. Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad everybody is waking up to this now, but this has been a problem for a long time. So my baby is 18 months. Um, I had to formula feed her, and so you stop at about a year. So in those last three months before she turned a year old, I was having problems finding her formula, finding it um, in some of the ready-to-feed bottles. I noticed it, you know, eight to ten months ago, I was noticing that this was going on. And so as you started off, it's it's Congress just now starting to realize it and paying attention almost eight, ten months a year after this problem started. Uh, listen, the Federal Reserve, we all have to remember, I, I think that they're a big part of the problem. We blame a lot of it on Congress and spending, as we should, the trillions of dollars that the Biden and the Democrats have pumped into this economy. But where has the Fed been? The Federal Reserve just raised rates uh, last month or I in March. Um, we've known about inflation for a year. They kept saying it was transitory. It wasn't really until November that I think the Fed started to wake up and raised rates in March. So yes, the Democrats in Congress get a lot of the blame, but I think Republicans Republicans in Congress uh, need to have more oversight of the Fed, especially these new Biden appointees, and say, what are you guys going to do about this? You're a, a good solid year short to trying to tackle, uh, trying to tackle inflation. That's yeah. a great point. Biden's uh, favorite word, transitory, has taken on yeah. a new meaning, hasn't it? <laughs>